good evening students hope you are all doing good so as a part of the second semester syllabus in the previous classes we have discussed about the new neutra zero group elements or the inert gases and also about the de block elements and again in the inorganic chemistry unit we are being studying about the oxides types of oxides we have discussed and we have also discussed about the types of uh, oxides of uh, carbon okay carbon has two types of oxides carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide their structure hybridization everything we have discussed before the vacation so according to university guidelines from to today we are going to have the online classes again okay so all of you have to regularly follow the classes i make a note of all the topics which are discussed and uh, only few topics uh, which are left over like one or two units uh, chapters uh, small topics uh, of the first semester will also be covered at the same time so concentrate and uh, prepare well for the and get ready for the first semester examinations also okay so nitrogen today we are going to discuss about the nitrogen oxides types of oxides of nitrogen that is nitrous oxide nitric oxide nitrogen dioxide dinitrogen trioxide and nitro dinitrogen pentoxides like this we have five different types of oxides of nitrogen okay in the nitrous oxide you can see here the structure just a minute i can take the yes so this uh, nitrous oxide n2o has a structure like this okay so this is relatively inert and it is also known as we all know that it is called as laughing gas nitrous oxide in movies and all we'll see exposure to this gas will make the nervous system to feel like uh, laughing and uh, the people who inhale this gas they will continuously laugh for about 10 to 15 minutes so this is called as laughing gas it's a thermal stability it decomposes at a higher temperatures like 600 degree centigrade to form the nitrogen and oxygen okay next is nitric oxide nitric oxide is no so it has a structure either like this or like this so these two are called as resonance forms of nitric oxide so this nitric oxide it reacts with oxygen atmospheric oxygen it combines with atmospheric oxygen to give what is that nitrogen dioxide okay so this nitric oxide also oxidizes the further acids like sulfurous acid to give sulfuric acid so it is oxidizing this acid so this is called as oxidizing agent okay and it also combines with the halogens to form nitrosyl halide suppose uh, this nitric oxide when combined with the chlorine it gives nitrosyl chloride so in that way it combines with halogens to form nitrosyl halides okay it is very stable with water it does not react with water next is dinitrogen trioxide this dinitrogen trioxide on hydrolysis it gives a nitrous acid okay n2o3 is the dinitrogen trioxide it gives nitrous acid nitrous acid means hno2 nitric acid means hno3 per nitric acid is hno4 so like this we have different types of acids of nitrogen also so this dinitrogen trioxide it gives nitrous acid on hydrolysis okay so nitrogen dioxide next is nitrogen dioxide or n2o4 no2 or n2o4 both can be treated as nitrogen dioxide okay so this dinitrogen nitrogen dioxide structure is already we have discussed so it is paramagnetic because of the presence of lone pair of electrons on nitrogen atom it dimerizes on cooling to form n2o4 so no2 what does it do it dimerizes means it combines as two molecules to form n2o4 okay so this 
nitrous nitrogen dioxide when treated with a base like NaOH it gives the salts salts like sodium nitrite and sodium nitrate okay so this um, nitrogen dioxide is uh, acting as an acid here hence it is reacting with a base a strong base like sodium hydroxide to form the respective salts so what is the nature of this acid oxide it is acidic in nature so anything any uh, oxide if it reacts with a base then it is called as acid if it reacts with an acid then it is called as a base okay so the stability of an oxide with nitrogen having higher oxidation number decreases so if the nitrogen having uh, the nitrogen present in the oxide which will if it has a higher oxidation state then its stability is less see now in uh, nitrogen dioxide NO2 the oxidation state of nitrogen is plus 4 right in the case of uh, nitric oxide it is plus 2 so what is happening now from nitric oxide to nitrogen dioxide the oxidation state of nitrogen is increasing as the oxidation state is increasing its stability decreases stability decreases means it can easily react it can easily decompose it can easily hydrolyze like that so it involves in chemical reactions very easily when compared to the oxide with a lower oxidation state on the central nitrogen atom okay so this is about the so it readily reacts with water to form nitrous as well as nitric acid so what is nitrous acid i have told you nitrous acid is hno2 nitric acid is hno3 now you can see that the nit dinitrogen trioxide on hydrolysis gives only nitrous acid whereas nitrogen dioxide on hydrolysis gives nitrous as well as nitric oxide so this is very unreactive it is not stable okay as we go down the group the inert pair effect increases uh, and uh, oxides having uh, elements of higher oxidation states decreases okay so nitrogen nit nitrogen phosphorus arsenic antimony and bismuth okay so this uh, group uh, if you see the nitrogen and phosphorus they can form the oxides with a higher oxidation state on the central atom but when you go down the group so what does we learn from the groups we learn that as we go down the from, from the top to the bottom in a group the inert pair effect increases because of this the lower oxidation states their stability increases for example if you see nitrogen phosphorus arsenic antimony and bismuth bismuth exhibits only plus 1 oxidation state whereas uh, nitrogen and phosphorus they can exhibit plus 3 and uh, plus 5 oxidation state also so in this way the oxides formed by the low um, group elements which are in the lower part of the periodic table they have lesser oxidation states okay so this is about dinitrogen this is n2o3 okay dinitrogen trioxide this is no2 nitrogen dioxide this is n2o4 dinitrogen tetroxide this is n2o5 dinitrogen pentoxide okay okay so this is about the description about and discussion about the oxides of nitrogen now we are going to discuss about the oxides of phosphorus the oxides of phosphorus are of uh, some like two or three types okay so basically it is phosphorus trioxide and phosphorus pentoxide so they exhibit two different types of oxides that are trioxides and pentoxides trioxides they exhibit the plus 3 oxidation state and pentoxides they exhibit the plus 5 oxidation state okay so trioxide p4o6 structure is given like this okay and a pentoxide structure is given like this so p4o6 is a acidic oxide okay it reacts with water to form phosphorus acid whereas p4o10 pentoxide phosphorus pentoxide is a what is that it is also acidic and when compared to trioxide it is more acidic because the oxidation state of the phosphorus is increased here as the oxidation state of the central atom in a molecule increases its acidic nature increases okay so this is more acidic so it reacts with 
calcium oxide to form calcium phosphate it hydrolyzed to give phosphoric acid so calcium oxide is a base we know that calcium oxide is a base so phosphor phosphorus pentoxide when treated with this base they form the salt that is calcium phosphate so in this way this phosphorus pentoxide acts as a acid here and calcium oxide is a base their reaction gives the salt formation okay so phosphorus pentoxide also hydrolyzed to give the phosphoric acid next one is sulfur so nitrogen and phosphorus we have finished earlier we have finished the carbon carbon is fourth group element fourth group element oxides we have finished fifth group elements nitrogen and phosphorus oxides are given in the syllabus now we are going into the sixth group sixth group what is the sixth group oxygen group oxygen sulfur selenium tellurium and polonium right so in the oxygen group oxygen is already there so we are discussing about the oxy oxides so oxides of sulfur now we are going to discuss okay sulfur forms a number of oxides with oxygen like sulfur monoxide sulfur dioxide sulfur trioxide and sulfur heptoxide so this one tri tetra penta hexa and hepta they show the number of oxygen atoms present in that molecule so now we are going to discuss about the structures and the properties of the individual oxides sulfur dioxide can be written like this or like this and like this so these are called the isomeric forms of the or uh, of the sulfur dioxide so this can be written like this or also like this okay so they have the same structural formula but differ in the arrangement of the electrons so that is so sulfur dioxide can both be written like in these two forms sulfur trioxides are written like this okay and uh, sulfur trioxide can also be written like this they exist as linear chain structure in the solid form so sulfur dioxide and trioxide are both uh, so in this way the sulfur trioxide it exist as a solid in the solid state it exists as linear chain like structure okay so sulfur dioxide properties we will see now it acts both as reducing as well as oxidizing agent means what does it do it oxidizes as well as reduces it reduces acidified kmno4 and acidified k2c dichromate potassium dichromate and potassium permanganate it reduces both the solutions okay and uh, it oxidizes uh, hydrogen sulfide to sulfur metallic or uh, elemental sulfur okay so it oxidizes the hydrogen sulfide to sulfur see here in this reaction it is shown what is oxidation removal of hydrogen or addition of oxygen is called as oxidation so in this reaction what the sulfur dioxide is doing it is removing the hydrogen atoms from the hydrogen sulfide to give the sulfur okay elemental sulfur in the same way you can see here it oxidizes magnesium to magnesium oxide in this reaction the oxygen is added to magnesium so this is also a oxidation reaction whereas in the earlier cases these reactions are reduction reactions so see here the oxidation state of the manganese is decreased from plus 7 to somewhere around plus 2 or something like that okay so this reduction in the oxidation state it shows it is reduction and this is oxidation reaction so this sulfur dioxide can be used both for oxidizing as well as reduction process okay so sulfur dioxide it is stable but on strong heating it dissociate to form sulfur as well as sulfur trioxide so <coughs> three moles of sulfur trioxide dioxide gives two moles of sulfur trioxide and the elemental sulfur <laughs> sulfur dioxide and hydrolysis gives it hydrolyzes to give the what is that sulfurous acid now we are going to discuss about the sulfur trioxide so it is 
most acidic and reacts with bases to form salts okay sulfur trioxide is strongly acidic why it is strongly acidic because it is having the oxidation state in more number so sulfur trioxide is a strongly acidic and it reacts with a base to form the corresponding salts sulfur trioxide when treated with the sodium hydroxide this is a strong base sodium hydroxide and sulfur trioxide they react to form sodium sulfate which is a salt sulfur trioxide on treatment with the calcium oxide calcium oxide is also a base they form the calcium sulfate so in this way sulfur trioxide it behaves as an acid so it is a powerful oxidizing agent and oxidizes the hydrogen bromide to bromine gas it hydrolyzes to give sulfuric acid sulfur trioxide hydrolysis on hydrolysis gives the sulfuric acid so this is about the oxides students so, so we have uh, discussed uh, the classification of oxides so go to earlier classes um, lectures posted in the group and uh, find out about the oxides oxides are different types like acidic oxide basic oxide neutral oxide amphoteric oxides uh, suboxide superoxide neutral oxides like this that is the classification of oxides important for four marks question and after that we have discussed about the oxides of carbon now today we are discussing and we have discussed about the oxides of nitrogen phosphorus and sulfur tomorrow we are going to discuss about the oxides of chlorine okay thank you for uh, the listening okay